to get this one off, what a, the mistake a lot of people make is... Come on, you got to be kidding me. There we go. Replace your counter shaft seal if you got one that's leaking or... Uh... Oh yeah, this can be fun, fun, fun. So this is what my chain is doing right now. My chain's starting to bind at the links. Now it's an O-ring chain, so the O-rings give it a quick hit of that. I like to use... Uh... Guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're gonna do a little bit of maintenance on the 450 and give it some love. So I've got here my 06 YZ450F that just got done having a full top end rebuild on it. And of course, you know, come maintenance time for the motor, there's other things that need maintenance too. Basically what I need to get done today is I've got to change, there goes a little tote goat looking thing. I've got to change my chain, my rear sprocket, and my front sprocket, and then also my chain block is wore pretty low, but that part is not here yet, so I'll do that later. But, And I have to recommend this primary drive chain block over the stock, it's amazing. So, um, hours on this chain, I'm thinking somewhere around the 60 hour mark, 70 hour mark, um, because this is my second set of chain and sprockets since I've had this bike. Um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and swap that out. It's a pretty easy process. I'm going to show you some tricks though that a lot of people struggle with and that is regarding getting off that front sprocket um, and then obviously we'll flip to the back and get that one off and uh, do a full swap out here. Um, also, I've got fork seals coming for it so I will have a video coming soon on how to do fork seals on a set of KYB SSS forks. Um, also, I'm replacing the inner um, free piston with a billet aluminum replacement. So um, that will be awesome. Let me show you what I got here. Uh, we've got a Super Sprox steel sprocket. We've got a JNT um, lightweight sprocket. And then we're going again with a primary drive um, standard 520 O ring chain. Um, now there's three types of chains there's your standard chain, an O ring chain, an X ring chain, and then I think there's another one now. I don't remember what it's called, but. Um, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk about the differences here in just a minute and then why I went with steel sprockets over aluminum and all that jazz. So the 125 here, we've got a standard gold chain and a aluminum rear sprocket with a steel standard front sprocket. So a little bit different combo there than what I'm going on for here because this is, this is my daily driver. This is my, this is my bike that I ride. This is the build bike. So if you guys aren't following along on the build process or the build video, build series for this bike, um, go check it out. This thing is amazing. Um, the lighting is horrible right there. Let me flip around to the other side here so you guys can see. Ooh, there we go. So anyway, coming along great. So yeah, let's hop on the uh, sprocket change on the 450. All right, now this is always the one that gets everybody. This is a 27 millimeter nut that goes on your counter shaft. Um, to get this one off, what a, the mistake a lot of people make is they they pull the chain off first, and then they're like, "Oh my gosh, how do I get this off? You got to use an impact. You got to do something, something, whatever." No, get it off. Get this nut loose before you take your chain off, because then you can just use your rear brake, lock up the rear brake. The chain won't move. Break it loose, and you're golden. So that's how we're gonna do that. Now, first things first, we got to bend our tab down on our little keeper here um so that we can get this to turn and uh i always replace this every time i replace my sprocket my counter shaft sprocket because it's cheap insurance can't go wrong there <sighs> hop on the bike press the rear brake and then use your breaker bar or ratchet or whatever you got and break her loose just like that all right next thing we're gonna do is i don't know why i still have my side stand in there uh Use our master link pliers. I'll put a link down below where you can get these. They're freaking awesome. And go ahead and uh, pop off your master link and then um, we can remove our chain here. These master link pliers make it so easy unless your things wore out like mine is. Holy, come on, you got to be kidding me. There we go. Anyway, pop your master link off just like that. And uh, then we can pop our chain off. This one's gonna be fun to get out, I think. Oh, I knew it was gonna be that way. Yeah, there we go. All right, now it's off and we can uh, roll this bad boy out of here. All right, gonna finish popping off our 
counter chef's rocket here and right now is going to be a great time to go ahead and uh, replace your counter shaft seal if you got one that's leaking or uh, um, I get uh, what I was going to say I have a video up on how to do that I replaced this counter shaft steel when I bought the bike and it's still good to go so you see how dirty that is back there so what we're going to do is just clean this up real quick get a rag and some uh, contact cleaner clean it up real quick I'm actually going to take my chain uh, saver or my case saver off too and clean up behind it and then we will have a fresh start at our new uh, new counter shaft rocket. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our front sprocket on. Um, and what I like to do is just hit it with a little bit of WD-40 right there, um, just to give it a fresh start. And then um, we're using a steel JT front sprocket here. This is their drilled out version, or supposedly more lightweight. And then shove it on until you're uh, exposing the teeth there on the counter shaft. Then you can take your brand new clip Put it on like that with the tabs facing outward and then put your nut back on. Um, I don't use anti-seize or anything like that on here. Um, never had a problem with it. A lot of them get seized up because people just let them rust. But whenever I get done washing my bike, I actually just take a hit of WD-40 and just spray this and it keeps it from rusting and all that stuff. Cause it is a, it is a steel nut. So, okay, we're gonna leave that just like that. I'll reinstall my case saver. Um, and oh crap, you know what I forgot? Crap, I didn't put my seal retainer back on or got cover for the counter shaft. Let me do that real quick. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. Let's put our sprocket back on and then um, just tighten that bolt down hand tight with our um, washer, our keeper on there for now and then we will address the rear wheel. Okay, now here's the cool thing about the Yamahas. The rear axle nut is the same size as the uh, counter shaft sprocket nut. So just use the same one. Now comes the fun part. We could take the old one off and put the new one on. Um, oh yeah, this can be fun, fun, fun. Um, let's see here. Get yourself a box end wrench and your impact, and go ahead and zip these bad boys off. Try the open den. See if I don't strip these out. Oh yeah, that wasn't too bad at all actually. Um, these can get seized up, snap off. Um, I will recommend always, always, always replace these when you do a sprocket. Do not reuse them. I don't care how good a shape they are. It's just one of those insurance things and, uh, you know, <laughs> we're sending this, you know. The bike, that is, not the parts. We don't want to send it on parts. That's, that's not cool. That's sketchy. All right, guys, I want to show you real quick the wear that's on this sprocket. Now, if that'll focus, you guys can see how sharp the edge is on the old sprocket and how square the edge is on the new. So not a ton of difference there, but a noticeable difference. Now, this rear sprocket is not in bad shape at all. I mean, when these things are razor sharp, that's when it's in bad shape. A lot of the times the teeth will be kind of crooked too um, due to you know not tightening your chain and keeping your chain tension correct. But that is a good example of a new sprocket versus a used one there that's a better view you can see that much clearer there so um glad we're doing this um the chain was the ultimate tattletale as to why um we should be changing these but uh yeah just wanted to give you guys a little close up there and show you um the differences let's go ahead and mount this so i was looking for the torque spec here and found this in yamaha's manual i forget about it that is uh, you don't want to be there. <laughs> and then I have a video up on how to, how to tell if your chains wore out. Um, but this one tells you, uh, the length, um, you can do a measurement to check to see if your chain is overstretched or not. And then, um, is there anything more on it? Yeah. Yeah. 
So this is what my chain is doing right now. My chain is starting to bind at the links. Now it's an O-ring chain, so the O-rings play a huge factor in that. Um, but after about 60 hours on it, uh, it's it's time. It's time anyway. We're avoiding a major a major uh, you know catastrophe there. Um, Real quick, the differences on chains are you have a standard chain, which is basically with the links, you have metal on metal. Then you have a O-ring chain, which has an O-ring between the links that seals the grease or the lubricant in from the factory. Then you have an X-ring chain, which has a little bit more flexibility, but does the same thing as an O-ring chain. So I forgot to talk about that in this video, um, but uh, rule of thumb here is your cheapest chain is a standard, metal on metal. Next will be your O-ring. X-ring is an upgrade from an O-ring. And then um, obviously price increase with each one. So just, just to cover that. Drive chain slack, 48 to 58 millimeters. That is from that bolt to the, top, to the bottom of the chain. And we call it the three finger rule. So if you can fit your three fingers in between the chain and that bolt, that is money 90% um, of the time. Um, obviously not for small bikes, but for big bikes that works. All right, time for our new sprocket. I am glad this one's black. It'll blend um, just a little bit better with the uh, overall theme of the bike. Um, not that that's important, but, you know, look good, feel good, ride good kind of thing. Good. Okay, torque on these. 30 foot-pounds, and do not mess around with torque on this. Do it at 30 foot-pounds. Now, um, I'm using brand new bolts, like I just said, retaining my washers on the bottom. I'm gonna torque these to the correct spec. Um, so a little story, um, stories by Dan here. Uh, I'm at OMC in Oklahoma and I'm riding around and this kid stops in front of me. And I pull over just to see, you know, what, what his deal is, cause he looked like he was struggling. And uh, anyway, stops in front of me and he goes, man, my chain's loose. I say, yeah, it is. And it was loose, loose. He's like, all right, well, I'm gonna go finish this lap and then I'm gonna uh, um, go tighten it. Anyways, camera died, noob, fail, mistake. Uh, my story though, I got all these torques finally to 30 foot pounds <laughs> um, till I noticed, or when I noticed the camera died. But anyway, uh, Pulled off the side of the track and his sprocket bolts were loose and his chain snapped and went into his case saver. So anyway, just uh, maintain your chain, maintain your sprockets and you can't go wrong. All right guys, right now would be a great time if you haven't done this to pull your axle adjuster nuts or bolts and uh, put some anti-seize on them. Uh, because if those seize up, you're gonna have a really, really bad day. Um, so. I went ahead and cleaned up my swing arm a little bit, kind of refreshed it just slightly. Because, um, I mean, how often do I have my rear wheel off other than changing a tire or chain? Um, okay, I got that back up there. I'm go ahead and mount this thing up real quick. Lube your axle, don't forget to do that. Um, then it will come off as easy as mine did with no issues. So, all right. Get this bad, bad, bad boy back on here. Come on. So easy. So, so easy. Okay, where am I at? There we go. All right, now at this point, what I like to do is I like to shove, whoa, whole bike's going forward. I like to shove my um, wheel up here when I'm doing a new chain and um, do it, go about dead center of the axle block. Um, and then what that does is that helps um, kind of get everything started. Um, and then just snug up this, your axle nut just to where it stays in place like it should. And then you'll use your axle adjustment bolts to slide your wheel back with your new chain on to get the correct tension. Then you don't have to worry about throwing a rag in and you know doing all those tricks to roll it. 
and it, and it just helps with this. I'll, I'll demonstrate right here. Okay, let's get our new chain out here. And I'm gonna feed this new chain on here and then show you what I'm talking about as far as adjustment goes. So, oh, I love a new chain. It's the most like reassuring feeling in the world. Just having a new setup, a new chain and sprockets is just, it's just amazing. Okay, when installing your master link, um, the O-ring chain is going to come with four O-rings and some lube. So we'll just open up our lube here and then take your master link with your O-rings on it and just put some lube on there like that. Nothing crazy. Woo! Um, just like so. And then go ahead and push this through because this is good to go now that you've got lube on it. I like to use a sprocket as a way to kind of hold everything and line everything up. It just makes it easier. And go ahead and get it lubed up. Now when you push this on, you can see that these, um, uh, what do you call them, links, these uh, pins and the links, um, you want to make sure that the O-ring is around those pins and that you're not pinching it otherwise. So just kind of work it on, yep, just like that. And then take your other O-rings for the other side, lube them up, throw them on like so. If you guys have done a standard chain, a standard chain's really easy. These O-ring chains really aren't that bad. They just take a little more finessing, if that makes sense. Okay, and then grab your link, and then push your link over the top there. And then your O-ring should find home by themselves. Now, this is where it gets fun. Um, I have a nice set of vice grip channel lock pliers that work great for this because they fit, it fits perfectly in between the link and makes it really, really easy to do. So I'm just going to pinch these together just like so. Yep. Working out really well. Okay. And you just want to pinch this together, get it collapsed, get it nice and tight, um, right where you want it. And then you can put your master link on. Your master link has to go this direction. So you want to face the opening towards the rear of the bike. One, you don't want the master link to pop off due to the direction of the chain. Um, whoops. I say a few reasons. Really, that's the only reason. And then pop it on. And there you go. Okay, and last but not least is our chain adjustment. Now I told you the three finger rule, which is three fingers, unless you have big old fat sausage hands or your teeny tiny six year old hands. <laughs> then um, just normal hands. You wanna fit that in there like that. And see, I have a gap in there, so that's clearly too loose. Um, now this is where that trick I just showed you about using your axle blocks um, tied up against the uh, um, adjustment nuts is going to help you because now everything's snugged up. Now you just loosen this to where you want it, and then when you're done, you just tighten these up. Makes it really, really simple um, to do. So I'm actually going to tighten my axle just slightly more, um, about like that. And then what you want to do is you have lines on your axle block. You want to make sure that those lines are equal on each side. That will make sure that your wheel is square. So let me check it again, just a little bit more. And I'm okay with it being just slightly tight right now because this chain's going to stretch a little bit. It's going to wear in just a little bit. So I like that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and snug this baby up. I'm one, two, three, four five, six and a half, and I am one, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven over here. So I think I have a little bit more. Yeah, I'll go one more half turn. Okay, that should be good. Okay, take my t-shirt, roll it up in here, pull it forward, and then 
snug my axle up. Money right there. Okay, now I can go ahead and tighten these up here and um, I should be good to go. One last thing that I forgot to mention. What I like to do when I tighten these up is I like I don't like the pressure from the axle to be on this bolt pushing in the threads there. So what I'm gonna do here is I've got my axle tight. So now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna back this off just slightly. Okay, about like so. Sorry, this is a horrible example because this was already snugged up a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back to my axle and just bump it. And then I'm gonna suck this down. And that takes all the pressure off the threads um, going the wrong direction, if that makes sense. So I don't, I don't know if it really matters. It's just something I like to do. Um, so I'm going to do it that way. Always done it that way. like doing it that way. So pretty simple. And then torque on the rear axle for this bike, 06 YZ450F, is 90 foot-pounds. So pretty, it's pretty snug. Okay, and then hop back up on our bike, and then we will torque our um, counter shaft sprocket, or our drive sprocket, as Yamaha calls it, to 54 foot-pounds. And then, of course, find the tab that is flat, throw it in gear. Here we go and then drive the tab down and it won't back off. Okay, and very last is to go ahead and use some chain lube and give it a quick hit of that. I like to use um, chain guard. I don't like the chain wax because in my experience in the past, the chain wax leaves too much. It throws easily because um, it's a lot thicker. So it kind of globs up and throws easy and it doesn't clean off well. So that last chain that I had, I use the uh, chain guard and I love that stuff. I will put a link down below as to where you can get it. You can basically get it at any motorcycle shop, but um, it's this, this in my opinion is by far the best. All right guys, that wraps up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you found uh, it entertaining and educational. Uh, there's a the 125 build. Next video will be the workup on this baby. So almost done, almost done. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. S subscribe if you haven't. Give me a like. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.